I'd like to thank you for the invitation to speak. And uh, I'm going to be discussing two Indian trade textiles with serious art historical implications. So we want to just look at some of the famous uh, newspaper man questions about what is the story of these old cloths. So I'm going to be discussing Southeast Asia and in particular Sulawesi, which is outlined in pink here, formerly called the Celebes next to Borneo. When I was a young man, uh, I went out to find the meaning of life. So we're supposed to be telling a story. Um, I went exploring and uh, in, the, in the jungles. And one of the favorite, most beautiful places I visited multiple times now, Sulawesi. In the highlands of Sulawesi live the Taraja people, practice agriculture, and were famous headhunters in their day. They have uh, the greatest time in their life is actually their funeral. So in order to save up for the funeral, the people would keep their ancestors close at home and they would actually become mummified. And Indian trade cloths, as well as their own beautiful weavings of ikats, would be used in ceremonies associated with funeral and other life transition moments. So funerals are really large and people come from great distances. Uh, the offerings would include textiles presented, and we see here a king and a queen funeral, megaliths, uh, Carabao, water buffalo sacrifices, the use of textiles as banners. And here's the traditional architecture in the form of boats. <clears throat> it's been associated with close way back. And that what happened is that the Christian missionaries, uh, many Protestants, some Catholics, uh, came into the area by the Dutch influence, but they were able to preserve their cultural heritage in part, uh, trying to separate out uh, what's pagan and what's Christian is a, a little bit of a, um, sometimes a blend. But I wasn't the first person to come there. This was an area of great trade before even the Dutch arrived in Portuguese. So this is outlined here in red and uh, green lines. What people were after already from Roman times were spices like pepper and uh, the mace, nutmeg was the most valuable, cinnamon. What the people in Indonesia wanted in exchange for their spices wasn't necessarily gold and silver, although they took some of that made jewelry. It was actually textile. Some were double E cot and some were printed cotton cloths. And we have surviving pieces that came from the West in the Gujarat area and on the southeast, called the Coromandel Coast, uh, painted uh, modern resist textiles akin to batik. So these are some images of, uh, of Indian trade cloths that were found in different parts of different islands. But I'm interested in these very ancient ones and wondering, well, uh, which one's earlier? And um, I'm fascinated by the patterns well, it turns out that looking at the first one, we see what's called the hamsa or goose design in a circular form. And when I was up there in uh, 1992, 93, I, I found this textile uh, together with a companion piece in astonishingly perfect condition. I recognize the pattern as being one known from the Fostat uh, archeological site in Egypt, Cairo, uh, the, the so-called dump of Cairo on the Nile. And this has been attributed to the 15th century. I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing, 15th century. And here's a color example. You can see the relationship to the pattern. Further, I asked 
the scholars of the time, Mademoiselle Gittinger, and uh, she said, well, it's unlikely that the textile is so old because uh, uh, the pattern was popular and we used, uh, the idea would be that the woodblock print, the woodblock is old. But I was looking at this uh, uh, chop in the corner and I'm thinking, you know, this, this seems not like a 19th century chop. Uh, this looks like a pre-European contact, but how to prove this? Well, thankfully, using radiocarbon dating, the piece that I had was, I sold it um, to the Ashmolean Museum through Ruth Barnes, who tested it and found it to be indeed from the 15th uh, to the 17th century. And uh, so that is, it confirms as well with the piece, which I started showing you at the beginning of this talk. And yet there's another example, again, with a small leaf pattern, uh, known, recognizable from the Fostat site. Here is a complete piece. Instead of tiny little fragments, we're finding up in the head ending ceremonial customs of preserving these textiles, pieces that are more than 500 years old, traded by Arabs, made by Hindus and Jains. So this is pretty extraordinary, cross-cultural global trade before the Europeans arrived. This tested 1428 to 1468. This is a 15th century piece without doubt. So I'd like to just talk as well, since this is uh, further about conservation and restoration, what's the difference? Well, example of conservation here is showing a backing of holes with matching color, so as to not uh, distract the eye, but uh, and add strength. I thank the Talisman Textile Conservation for this. Restoration on the other side, we see the um, bad patch, indigenous patch in the upper slide. Uh, <clears throat> on the right, we see uh, Vera Indenbaum's great work of uh, reweaving the border zone where a rat had presumably chewed this corner when this uh, textile was in storage in a longhouse. And we see a beautiful restoration. So, the Indian trade cloth with this uh, kind of ancient uh, heritage would be put down in a conservative manner on a first cleaned and then put on a blue backing. This gives support and prevents further damage. Books that are very important for the subject that helped me to recognize these pieces as being as early as they turn out to be include the following. Indian block textiles from India found in Egypt, woven cargoes, Indian textiles in the East, interwoven globe from the Met, traded treasures from Cornell, recent exhibition, textiles of India, fresh book out from the Neumann collection and cloth that changed the world from the Royal Ontario Museum edited by Sarah Fee and presently up. And here's a fabulous example of a hand painted dye Morden resist. So I feel as to sneak across the border to see this exhibition. And if the restraints lift, please take, check it out. Otherwise, start to build your library. Thank you very much. And I respectfully return this over.